What's up, Devils? j Dog back for another goddamn video. And today's video, we're going to be knocking out the fucking comments on which fucking video? j Dog kicked out a Monroe Buffler. <laughs> How'd you like that one, Devils? You kicked out the old fucking dog for wearing a goddamn Tosh Call Cost shirt. Can you believe that shit? Seemed like you guys got a pretty kick out of that one. 24 comments, so nothing too crazy, but a few people thought it was pretty funny at least. And uh, so, there wasn't a ton of questions on here, but I'll get to the ones that are. So, probably won't, shouldn't be too long of a video. But here the fuck we go from Troy Morocco. Seen him comment a few times. Looks like he's got another question. I got two cats named Vader and Sabbath. They love when I spin my spin some records. They come running in the rooms. And they know what's up. Sweet. Vader and Sabbath. I those are pretty damn good names. I think... Uh, Sabbath, like, for example, remind me of uh, King Diamond, one of his cats' name. I think he had, like, an all-white cat, and his name was Ghost. And then he have another black cat called Magic. Kind of reminds me, you got kind of, like, metal terms for fucking cats. That's pretty fucking cool, man. Uh, what's the most money you ever spent on a record? Most money ever spent on a record. The first one that always comes to my mind, I think it was the original Running Wild um, Gates of Purgatory picture disc. Which doesn't even, I've always, it, it's kind of, the cover's cool, but I wish it was the album cover. What someone needs to do is a, a picture this, like a bootleg, or official, but preferably a bootleg, that way it's nice and limited, is uh, the original cover, you know, you know the album cover with these fucking little sparks and shit, or, you know, you know, you know the goddamn cover. But the original picture disc, uh, the back is lame as shit. I think it just has the track list, and no band photo, and the front is just the running wild symbol. It's like a bluish, and I think... Um, I paid two hundred dollars for that on eBay, and that was that was quite a long time ago now. Uh, there might have been something else equally expensive or more, but that one comes to my mind the most. Also, uh, and where where was the Nunslaughter video God filmed? I still watch that video almost every day. Laugh out loud, shit, almost every day. God, fuck damn, it's fucking awesome, man. Uh, I actually helped record that video, and it was at the uh, Hell's Headbangers Warehouse. If you kind of want a little bit more details on it, go watch Goddamn Fr Francisco's podcast that i'm on we did a two-hour podcast we talk about it uh not in great detail but a little bit more detail i answer on there that way give francisco some love if you like my channel i'll probably like him if you like me you'll probably like him him and i got along real well so you know kind of similar personalities but um it's the channel is i've said it a million times on here is j-o-a-b-a -A, jamming out all bad ass so search like just search that out or fucking uh you know, J-Dog, Hell's Headbangers interview, podcast, whatever, just come up. You might have to do a few quick, quick search. I did it, like, uh, what, two weeks ago now? If you haven't seen it, but I, we definitely talked about the uh, God video, because that was one of his questions. Life Eternal, comments on everything, goddammit. Uh, Sick Mortal Decay shirt, brah. Is that the Grizzly Aftermath cover? Uh, I don't think it is. I actually recently just got that shirt. A buddy of mine just uh, gave it to me. Uh... But it's not. But it's funny. Grizzly Aftermath. That's one of my favorite um, Mortal Decay songs. But the uh, demo covers. I'm not even sure what's all in the demo covers because all I have is the uh, the. Uh, well, I'll even show you what I have. The CD wise, fucking Mortal Decay. The demo is. Well, the demos. I have this, which is the original. I had all the guys sign it too back in the day when I met them. The Gathering of Human Artifacts, and I don't think it has the demo covers in here. But this is their demos, and yeah, Grizzly Aftermath is one of my favorite. Um, Fucking songs, and then they. Uh, I think Grizzly Aftermath. That's also on the uh, the first album, The Seeking Erotic, which I like that a lot. That a lot as well. But I think the demos are probably my favorite thing. I kind of like those Toad vocals. Kind of really original. Nobody sounds like it. You know what I mean? But there's my. This is what I have. You had all the guys sign it in gold. So that's what I have. The actual demo covers. I never actually had the cassettes or anything. Um, it's gotta be something demo wise though, but, uh, I forget, I, it says it on there. I forget. I, it's kind of like, dude, I get so much shit. It's just kind of like hand it to me and, uh, oh, thanks, Brock. Was it in the back here? It does have, uh, no, that's not it. But, uh, yeah, this, I'm pretty sure is all the demos on this. It's a long disc, but I absolutely love this fucking disc. I listen to this. It's a pretty regular spin to this date. Um, huge fan of it. So I'm not, I don't, but I'm almost positive that's not the Grizzly app. Because I've seen all the demo covers, like on Metal Archives and shit. I've never actually owned the cassettes. I'm almost positive that's not the Grizzly Aftermath cover. Uh, you ever toss around the idea of showing your shirt collection? Some metalheads get a kick out of seeing good merch collection. Probably not, just because you kind of, for the most part, see what I'm uh, wearing. Uh, there's a few shirts that I have that I barely wear just because they don't, they don't fit me at certain times of year. Because, you know, whether I'm cutting or I'm bulking, uh, I kind of have like two sizes on it all the time. Usually uh, 2XL and 3XL. I have some XLs left, but...
but I don't really wear them because they'd be way, way too tight and super uncomfortable. So, you know, maybe when I uh, get older and if I downsize or whatever, I'll still have them though. But uh, pretty much for the most part, most of the shirts I have, you see me wearing. But a lot of them, I, I put a lot of rotation a lot more than others, not because I like them so much, because they're comfortable. Because like when you get in this whole fucking bodybuilding shit, that's a one, it's one of the drawbacks is that fucking shit feels weird and stuff on you. You know what I mean? It gets uncomfortable because your your dimensions and shit are much different than the average person. So I kind of wear, I cycle the t-shirts that are most fucking comfortable, which is about, I don't know, good, probably about a good 30, 40 of them. Then I got a shitload that just kind of hang on out. A lot of people talking about cats on this fucking, um, on this comment thread. I'm assuming this is one where I either show Charlie or Evie or got to bring Snake back in too. You guys want to see, I want to show Snake once. The one-eyed cat, Snake, named after Snake Plitzkin. He's super fucking cool. He hasn't been begging at the door as much. He used to be the fucking prime cat. As soon as I start to walk to my office because it's upstairs, he would fly up the fucking stairs because he knows, oh, that's the room I, I never get to go in because I keep it closed. And uh, he hasn't been as much like, but it's always been Evie and Charlie. They've been fucking uh, bombarding it. Like, so they don't even like, like Snake, sometimes when I'd open the door, he kind of like pause, like kind of looking like, oh, can I get in? Can I sneak in? Like fucking Evie and Charlie, they just fuck you, just bolt right in. As soon as I open the door, they didn't wait. Tough shit, whether you like it or not, Jay Dog, I'm coming in. So that's why I was showing them more. But uh, you know, even just grab Snake when he's But I mean, I know you want to come. If I left the door open, he would definitely get his ass up here and be curious. Got to show him on a camera. I'm sure in case you guys missed, I don't remember what video I showed him. It's been a while. I think I only showed him once. Ricky J. Hey, J Dog, if there was just one cardio workout to do a day, what would what would you be preferred one? Uh, for me, it's the uh, Stairmaster with the, you know, the rolling stairs. Not that up and down shit where your feet are on a pad and just goes like this. I don't like that one at all. Um, I just don't like how it feels. I feel like I'm going to fly off the goddamn thing. Not to say that you can't burn calories and get a good effect of cardio work. I'm not saying that. Um, I just don't personally don't like it. The actual rolling stairs where you just, you know, the, uh, ne never going on stairs. That's my absolute favorite cardio. The only downside of that is, is uh, for me anyways, I don't know if other people get this. I notice it was, especially when I'm hitting it really fucking hard during a diet. And, I'm, and the, the time on it's getting up there and up there, and I'm doing it pretty much seven days a week. Sometimes I'm doing it fucking twice a day at the towards the end, like the last two, three weeks of my diet. Is my um, my T bands, my hips, my connective tissue will start to fucking ache from overuse. When it gets really bad and get really inflamed, I'll switch over the treadmill. So for overall, if I had to do, and especially when I'm an old man, I'd probably pick the treadmill because you can always, if you're banged up and all fucked up, you can always just walk on the goddamn thing. Uh, you can adjust the speed, you can adjust the incline. But as far as productivity-wise, the uh, nothing beats the Stairmaster. That thing will fucking destroy you. Because, for example, when, I'm, when my cardiovascular is doing really good, it's kind of shit now because I'm pretty fucking heavy and I'm just towards the end of my bulk. Actually, I start my diet next goddamn month. So uh, the cardio will start to drastically go up and uh, my cardiovascular will get way, way better. It Basically, a rule of thumb, 45 minutes is what I like to do first thing in the morning. And if I do 45 minutes at a good pace, you know, a little bit of a brisk walk on an incline, followed by a jog for a few minutes, and a, then a brisk walk on an incline on a treadmill. I generally burn uh, the math. You type in your body weight. It's like that. I know it's not super accurate, but I go by the numbers and just try to beat those each time. I generally get about 500 calories in 45 minutes on the treadmill. On the fucking Stairmaster, I get 800. Same amount of time, 300. And you're, I'm sweating drastically fucking more on the, um, like, pouring sweat. As opposed to on the uh, treadmill, even though I'm going as hard as I can and stuff, but I'm out of breath. It's just I don't know the muscle groups is not working or whatever. Just the cardiovascular efficiency is uh, it's just it's just not burning as many calories. It's just it's clearly not. I don't give a fuck what the actual machine says. I know it cannot be accurate because how do you know? Do you have a lean guy on there? Do you have a fat ass on there? Uh, how old is the person? I understand, but it's, it's just kind of a uh, guesstimate. But nonetheless, whoever the fuck you are, uh, if you're hitting both hard, if you're hitting the stairmaster hard, if you're hitting the, uh, the uh, treadmill hard, you're going to definitely burn more calories in the stairmaster. As a matter of fact. When I first did the Stairmaster, I couldn't even do more than 10 minutes. I thought I was going to fall off the fucking thing. I was so goddamn out of breath. So it takes a little bit of a while. So if you ever try it, you'll be really discouraged. Like, oh, my God, I'm an absolute fucking pussy, out of shape pussy. I, like, I can't even, like, literally can do it. And it's funny because I got some, I mean, I, I can, uh, maybe not now. I could, man, I'd struggle to do it now. Uh, I, 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 last year and shit into my prior cuts, I could do it for an hour straight. No fucking problem. Now I was tired and sweat my balls off. Don't be wrong, but easily do it. You know what I mean? Without a problem, not stop and no, not go. And it's funny because some other guys, they're getting ready for shows and competing and stuff. And, uh, they switch to the cardio. They're sitting there talking to me. They're like, cause then they don't, they're generally just doing the treadmill. 
And I remember one, my buddy Kent, he's like, well, holy fuck, man. He had to stop in seven minutes. He's like, he's like, he's like I don't, how the fuck do you do this for 45 minutes or an hour? He's like, I feel like I'm going to fucking die. I was like, oh, no, don't get me wrong, man. You got to get used to it. I was like, I was, I was the same way. When I first tried, I was like, holy fuck, this is hard as a motherfucker. So my whole thing is, is as long as all my connective tissue shit's feeling good, get the most bang for your buck. If you're going to do something for 45 minutes, I want to get the most fucking calorie burn out of it, right? And the most cardiovascular health benefit, I guess, since it's harder. What's hardest is what's best. That's my fucking motto. So for me to be the Stairmaster, God damn it. Richard Wolf, how long did it take to put that big order and how much was the shipping? Uh, he was in Pennsylvania, I believe, so shipping probably wouldn't have been too bad. You figure media mail, I think it was six boxes. Each box was probably between 50 and 70 pounds. So media mail, the PA at that time, this is like 12, 13 years ago. For each box, probably about 30 bucks. So six boxes, about 180 bucks. So not bad for shipping. It would have been outrageously fucking expensive if it was overseas. How long it took to get, put together? I don't know, probably a couple hours. By the time to pull it all, pack it off, probably two hours. Nothing too, too crazy. But yeah, biggest order of all fucking time. From Shane Rosenke. Hey, man, been a fan of Hell's Headbreakers for years now. That's what I like to hear, brah, brah. Going to pose this question to you, and don't blame you if you don't want to get, get into it. I'll get right into whatever you got, man. I answer anything. Open motherfucking book over here. To tell you whatever the fuck you want to talk about. But what are your thoughts on what happened to Elegy Records and thoughts on Metal Sucks for their hand in that? Uh, am I out of loop? What happened to LG Records? I don't know. There's probably a bunch of people, shit, even my brothers and stuff I can hear Chase now. Fucking dumbass. What do you mean you don't know what happened to LG Records? Um, I don't know. Guys, you gotta remember, like, other than, like, so I started this YouTube channel back in December. I don't have a personal Facebook. I don't have nothing. I'm out of loop. This fucking phone is shit. It's a fucking, uh, it's not even an iPhone. I, like, I don't, I don't have all this stuff. I don't have Instagram, stuff like that. So, like, when it comes to, like, a lot of the drama and, like, stuff that goes on. I don't fucking know shit unless people tell me. I really don't. I'm kind of out of the loop. Um, so yeah, I really don't know. Uh, now if it's stuff that pops up on YouTube, like that's kind of how I find out my news, especially like if it's bodybuilding news, like, Hey, somebody just died or something like that. I find out about cause somebody posts on YouTube and it just pops up on my page. But any of this other stuff, unless, if it's just like, cause if it's only on Facebook or, um, Instagram, like I would know it. Like, yes, unless someone tells me I have no idea. As far as metal sucks, I don't know a whole lot about them other than it just seems like they're a bunch of shit bags. I mean, obviously they did stuff about us. It just sounds like it's a bunch of fucking little girls over there that are just high school drama making up shit and lies and just maybe not shit and lies, but just kind of like only talking about negative stuff like headlines and let's just like talk, talk trash. Like, don't you have anything positive to talk about? Um, so my thoughts on metal sucks is kind of like the little I know about them. I don't really like, uh, it just seems like a negative fucking, um, what the fuck are you, uh, is it, what is it even considered? Just a goddamn, uh, um, not a thread. You, uh, what the fuck are those things called? Um, uh, goddamn things that you write messages and shit back and forth. Uh, I'm gonna draw on a blank, but whatever the, is it just one of those goddamn things? I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of like, it's not a, I don't know, don't know much what I know. It's just, I, what I know, I, the little I know about them, I don't like. I'll just say that. And LG, I don't know what the fuck. I know who LG is. Can't think of what they put out on the top of my head. I, I might even own some stuff. Um, we definitely got stuff, but I don't, what happened? We're out of business? I don't know. Jay Dinkins, are there record stores that Hell's deals with regularly that stock HHR releases? There is, but not as many as you think. And I'm assuming you're just referring to like uh, walk-in stores. I mean, uh, there's Sound Exchange in Texas. He uh, wholesales from us. Um, and then I'm sure like through some of our distributors, like when we send, it's kind of a more off to like um, like all our releases, like our CDs and LPs, they go off to a big time distributor and they distribute the stores. I'm sure some get it through there. Uh, Armageddon Records in uh, Rhode Island. I think he has actually two shops. Rhode Island doesn't have another state. Uh, he wholesales from us. Uh, there's there's some, but not nowhere near as many as you think, which is kind of weird. I don't know. I don't know why. Like you would think, like if I had a record store, like I would be. I mean, like contact him, and it's, I mean, if that's what you sell is metal, you know. Um, so yeah, there are some, but nowhere near as many as you think. And the last goddamn question here, like I said, wasn't too many on here, so it's not going to be too long. From Mike May. Who would win in a fight, <laughs> King Folly or Nasty Ronnie? Uh, I don't personally. Uh, <laughs> the guy replied here, Paul Hedrick. They're both fat now. <laughs> Wouldn't be much of a fight. <laughs> hey, sometimes fat guys can fight too, right? And you'd probably be out of breath real fucking quick. 
Uh, I don't know much about Matt, Matt Nasty Ronnie in person because I never met him, so I don't know him, and I, but I do know King. I'd have to go with King. King seems like he would be uh, kind of like a fight-to-the-death guy. And, uh, yeah, he's definitely obviously fat and out of shape. I mean, I don't think that's any fucking mystery. He'd be the first to tell you. Too many Funyuns, man. That's what he says. Um, <clears throat> but I just get the vibe that uh, I think he can fucking stomp some skulls, though. I, I'd get that vibe. Like, like per personally, I wouldn't want to get in a fight with him. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm not saying he could kick my ass or I could kick his ass. I'm not saying. I'm not, I, honestly, I don't care because I'm not a fucking bully and looking to fight people. Um, but I, I, even, even if I could kick his ass, which, I don't know. Maybe I can. Maybe I can't. I have a feeling I would fucking be leaving kind of fucked up, though, too. You know what I mean? Because I have a feeling he'd put up a damn good fight. Um, so, yeah, Nasty Ron, I don't know. But, yeah, I can see. I, I think King's still stomping some fucking skulls. So, yeah, if it was a betting match, if it was a fucking just on the street outside of a fucking metal show, <laughs> people were taking bets, fights on, you got to put your money on somebody, I'd have to go with King. That's that's who I'd go with. What do you got? What do you devils think? King Fowler or Nasty Ron? Well, maybe that, <laughs> we'll put that in the poll. I, I mean, it should be up by now. The poll I did, uh, what, Empatago versus Macabre? We're going to do that. I, I, see how these polls go. Right? I think it might be a kind of a hit. Get you devils talking. If nothing else, even if I don't respond to it because there wasn't much, I kind of gave my opinion. I said, King, uh, you already got my take. That way, you know, the devils, you can interact with each other, get a little interaction. And, and then if I got to make a video on it to, uh, you know, there's a more comments and question there. But put in the goddamn thing. I'm going to make that part of this title of video. Who'd win in a fight? King Folly or Nasty Ronnie? Who do you think? Put it in there, goddamn devils. What, who do you think? But uh, we'll, we'll do a tally. We'll see who wins. You know, if there's 100 goddamn votes, you know what I mean? Who wins? Is there 50 for Ronnie? I mean, is there 60 for King and 40 for Ronnie? We'll see. Or, or 60 for Ronnie, 40 for King. We'll care curious what you guys think. So, yeah, that's going to be partial this fucking video. I want a goddamn another poll going on, motherfuckers. So leave it in there, goddamn. Don't be one of these shy-ass fucking pussies. I see when I see 500 comments, I better see 500 poll votes. So, yeah, that's it for this one, Devils. Leave that goddamn poll vote in there and any other goddamn questions you have, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.